Good morning, and welcome to the Steel Free Anointed Ministry. This is the first Sunday of the month. God is blessing us, and we're just happy to be here with y'all this morning. Uh, this morning, we'd like to bring you a word from God, from a word from on high, and we're hoping that this word will enlighten you. This word will give you something to last throughout the whole week as we uh, try to get ourselves through this week. You know, the things have been trying to try and troublesome for us, but God is still on the throne. Yes, he is. I received a, a message this morning from a fellow minister friend that said that God is good and that we are to be blessed today. You know, blessings only come when you desire to have them, when you receive them. So let us pray. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you this morning. God, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace this morning. We thank you that you allowed us to rise this morning to see this day. And truly, we are able to say that this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We ask that now, Heavenly Father, that thou would just anoint us to bring forth your word this morning to your peoples, Father God, and that they are able to receive it, Father God, and that it may be something that will cause them, Father God, to feel better than that which they are feeling. We thank you. We praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. As we just continue to go forth this morning in God's word. We just thank you all this morning for your, let me get my stuff situated <laughs> here. Um, they thought we was together, but sometimes you know how things can be. But God bless you. <laughs> my daughter's funny. But amen. So this morning we're going to try to bring you God's word. and We'll be coming from the book of Acts, from the book of Acts, which is behind the book of First John. Uh, amen. Thank you. Anyone who wants to join, please join. And we will love to have you. We thank you this morning, brother, for joining in over this morning. God bless you. We love you. And we're looking forward to hearing from you as we allow you to hear from us. Amen. From the book of Acts this morning, chapter 3, we are going to be reading from verse 1 through 10. And we definitely going to try to bring it to you as God has given it to us. The book of Acts, which is behind John, the gospel of John, beginning it. At verse 1. And the title of the message this morning is simply called Live Like You Are Healed. Live like you are healed. Oftentimes we have pains and things in our body, and we we so much uh just dwell on those particular pains. But then we quote scripture that said, By his strikes we're healed. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do is understand the scriptures then. I can't claim healing, but yet I'm still proclaiming healing. Yeah. I can't claim healing, but yet I'm still proclaiming sicknesses and weaknesses in my body and in my mind, in my spiritual mind as well as my physical. So I, I, uh, uh, the, the book will tell us that we should live as if we're healed. Sure. And there's a lot of time I wake up and I'm in pain, but I go on through the day. I, I just go on and I say, this too will pass. And I perform my duties throughout the day as though it has passed. I, I must believe my mind has passed. And, and then what happened is throughout the day, I forget I was in pain. Like, what happened? I, I am not hurt no more. So we want to live like we are healed. Amen. Verse, verse, verse 1 of chapter 3 of Acts. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. Peter and John were up to the temple and to the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. That it says the ninth hour, when we look at our calendar, the ninth hour is actually at three o'clock. It's actually at three o'clock. We know sometimes we have services at three o'clock. Things begin to happen at the three o'clock hour. So it's saying that it went up into the temple at the ninth hour, the ninth hour for prayer. For prayer. And it goes on to say, and a certain man. A certain lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called the gate of beautiful. It's just like if you're being sick and you got to go to the doctor, you expect for a beautiful thing to happen when you go to the doctor. Hmm. And sometimes somebody has to carry to the doctor because you are not able to drive yourself or take yourself. So it said that this man was being carried up there. This is a regular thing. Although this is like a regular appointment that he has every Every time prayer is being, it's like a regular appointment that you had to go to the doctor. Mm -hmm. For instance, I had a regular appointment to go to the doctor uh, 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 last Friday. 
Amen. God bless you. And a regular appointment to go to the doctor. And when we have the appointment to go, we should go. Why? If we don't go, then why are we saying we heal? That, that, that no man that's not sick is in need of a physician, but, 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 but one that's sick is in need of a physician. So when you're sick and you need a physician, you go to the physician. Now you go to the physician because God has a lot of physician to be there. But as you go to the physician, believe in your mind that you will be healed. And then began to live like you healed. When you go to the physician and he tell you certain things to do, do it. Then they live like you healed. Do what he said, do they live just as though you are healed. Because you cannot be healed if you're still living in your pain. It's, it's, it's just no way I can say, well, I'm all right. How you doing there? I'm fine. But then, but, but this happened, this happened, this going on, that's going on. Then you ain't fine then. Admit you ain't fine. So there's a healing process that needs to take place. In order for me to be fine, I got to live like I'm fine. In order for me to be good, I got to live like I'm good. Live like you are healed. It says that there's a daily occurrence which had taken place in one way or another since the man was a child. Little did he realize that this would change today. See, we must realize that our situation can change today. We, we must realize that and we must believe that our situation can change today. If you don't believe it, it ain't coming to pass. This old saying, if you do the same thing the same way, the same time, every the same day, you're going to get the same results. And what are the results? Crazy insanity. So you must begin to do things different on a different day, at a different time, at a different way, if you want a different change. Amen. Amen. So we go on. To ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Mm -hmm. Who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. Okay, and it said they, they asked alms of Peter and John. In other words, it said he would beg. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to the doctor. I'm going to beg the doctor to do something good for me. Mm -hmm. I ain't nothing wrong with begging if you're begging for the right reason. That's right. Doctor, I need help. I'm begging you help me because I need help. And as we call upon the doctor for help, guess what? who else we should be calling on? Jesus. Jesus, I need help. Help me. Jesus, I'm all in my mucker and my clay. I need your help. Help me, Jesus. Jesus, I'm pain in my back. Help me, Jesus. If we began to put Jesus in the midst of our healing, by his stripes, we are healed. And he said, so he saw Peter and John going up there, and he asked them, give me something. Let me have something. All the time we hear somebody say, let me have something. They ain't want healing. They want money or something. That effect. Let me have something. But he asked them to give me something. Surely he was asking for things, uh, material things at a time. But we look at this from a spiritual standpoint. He was asking for healing, divine healing. Because he know that at this time, they're always going up there for prayer. It didn't say they going up there to eat. It said they going up there for prayer. So this man know that. And he knew. I don't know if y'all saw it this way, but this is how God revealed it to me. He wasn't just going there and begging for money and stuff like that also, but he knew at this particular time that prayer was going on. And if he didn't get money, there was a great chance, a great possibility mm -hmm. that he could get the divine healing that he needed because that's what he needed. Mm -hmm. Because every day he was carrying him up there. He, was, he couldn't walk. And Peter and John knew exactly what he needed. So let, let, let's see what they say. And Peter, fastening his eyes, looked at him. With John, mm -hmm. he said, look on us. And then what he said? They fastened their eyes upon the man as though they was moved by the Holy Spirit. When they say fat, they, they didn't just look. They didn't just look, okay, and turn their head. It's, they was moved by the Holy Spirit to really look at this particular individual. Because this particular individual had been coming daily. The doctor was moved to look at me thoroughly because I've been coming to every appointment not missing. So he knew that if I'm coming there for every appointment, there must be something that I'm in need of. So it said they, 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 they were moved by the Holy Spirit to do something for this man. And so Peter wanted to hear exactly what he had to say. When you go to the doctor, you want the doctor to hear exactly what you got to say. See, see, you tell the doctor what's wrong with you. That, that's your job. You tell the doctor what is wrong with you. 
And what the doctor does, he they, they, they use the information that they have gained through knowledge of schooling and education to, to lay out the problem, to, 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 to give you a remedy for it. But you tell them what's wrong with you. You don't walk in the doctor and doctor say, hey, I can see you blind. He ain't going to say that. You walk in the doctor, first doctor say, what's wrong? How can I help you? Why? Because that's what they They don't know what's wrong with you. You might just have your eye closed. You might be pretending you're blind. So, so you tell them what's wrong with you. You go to Jesus and you tell Jesus what's wrong with you. You tell Jesus how you feel about a certain situation. You tell Jesus how you live it. You tell Jesus what you know, what you don't know. You tell him. It's not that Jesus don't know because he knew all things. What it is about it is just like when God came into the Garden of Eden, he was looking for Mo, uh, uh, Adam and Eve. And he said, oh, Adam, where are you? Where are you? Where you at, son? Where you at, man? Where, 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 where you be at? It wasn't that God didn't know. God wanted to see if they would just step up and be honest about what's going on. Tell the truth. The doctor want to know, do you have any idea what's wrong with you? Before he can begin to, to, to figure out stuff according to the book knowledge that he's received. Mm -hmm. so, so let's go on. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. He gave heed. He stopped and listened. He began to talk. He, he wanted to receive something then. Now it said he expected to receive something of them. Mm -hmm. Now, this verse don't say exactly what he expected to receive, but it did say he expected to receive something from them. Now, I know we've been taught that we read the scripture, we said he was there begging, so he wanted money. We assume that that's exactly what he wanted, money. Because the scripture says, a certain man lay lame from his mother's womb, carried about and laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Brutiful, and he asked for alms to enter into the temple. He asked alms of them who, and alms mean that he was asking for something physical. He like for money, he like food, whatever they could give him. Mm -hmm. Basically, basically if, you, if you really break the word down, the brother was just asking for help. Yeah. That's what he wanted help. So whatever the way the help would come, he would receive it. And Peter and John had something for it. They had the help for it. Let's go on. Mm -hmm. Then Peter said, mm -hmm. silver and gold mm -hmm. have I none. Yeah, I know. But such as I have give, I but such as I have give, I thee. Listen, I wonder how this statement was given by Peter concerning silver and gold relating to the modern greed message of the day. Mm -hmm. He said, silver and gold I have none, but such as I have, I give unto thee. I ain't got no silver and I ain't got no gold, but whatever it is that I got, I give it to you. And I got the Holy Ghost. I got Jesus. I got the Holy Spirit. I got the Son of God rambling through my body and my mind. I got what you need. I may not have what you want, but I got what you need. And I know that you need Jesus. I know you need the Holy Spirit. That's what Peter and John said. Silver and gold, I ain't got none. But such as I have, I give it to you. Let me, let me back up something here because I want to show you something. Still expecting nothing more than financial help, the cripple gave this attention. Then he heard an announcement that was both disappointing and yet thrilling to him. Uh, see, what did I say? He knew, but he knew they was looking for prayer, so it was something else besides money. Mm -hmm. He said that what he heard was disappointing, ain't no money, but yet it was thrilling. And he, he was excited to hear what he heard. Because sometimes people just give you stuff just to get you out your way anyway. I'm going to give you a dollar something going on. But mm -hmm. what if someone tells you, say, look, I'm not going to give you the money, but I'm going to give you the word of God. What would you do then? I'm going to give you the word of God. Can't do nothing but accept it. And that's what we need to start doing more and more. Even if you do give him a dollar, give him the word of God. Give him that word. So it said it was both disappointing and, 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 and thrilling to him. As far as the handout was concerned, Peter had nothing to give, but he had something better to give. He had no money, but he had something better to give. And the man was thrilled about that. Again, I said that he knew that this when they come up this hour, this was an hour of prayer too. So if I can't get no money, I'm going to get a prayer. I don't care what you got. Give me something. Give me a prayer. I need prayer. Let's go on. In the name of Jesus Christ mm. of Nazareth, mm. rise up and walk. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and write. President in modern day church has silver and gold, but doesn't have the power of God. Here 
here what, here what it says. At presently, other words, right now, today, the church have silver and gold, but they do not have the power of God. When the power of God is moving, it's not about money. It's not about the quantity of membership. It's not about who bring the word. When this power and the spirit of God is moving, whatever come forth is truly of God. You receive it and you use it and you move mm -hmm. on. The power of God. He says, silver and gold I am not, but such as I have, I give it unto thee. If the church today, I, I, I can't help but go back to some years ago when I, I, I was in another state driving and, and I would listen to the radio and it just at that particular time, I talked to the radio and I listened to it and it was during an election time and, and the election had been over and certain candidates had won. And I heard the man say, it's plain and simple. He said, the reason they won and the reason the state is the way it is, the reason this is and the reason that is because of the Christians. And when I heard it, I was like, I, 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 I didn't know if I speeded up or slowed down, but it sure got my attention. Just like this man, he said, what Peter said at first was disappointing, but yet it was thrilling to him. So what that man said to me, it was thrilling that, that it, it, was, it was disappointing to me that, that he said, it's because of the Christian, because I proclaim myself to be a Christian, a child of God. So he said, it's because of the Christian the reason this is happening. But yet I was thrilled to know that somebody was looking and understood that if the church does not do its job as it should be doing it, certain things in the negative will happen. I was thrilled to know that. So we must be about our business. Church. Let's go on. And he took him by the right hand mm. and lift him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he took him by his right hand, lifting up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That beggar heard a word from God coming from the mouth of Peter. And he believed it by faith. See, we think that he was just a beggar. He wasn't just a beggar. Maybe God, God think one day we're going to get a word that he's not just a beggar. It wasn't just a beggar. He, he wasn't just a beggar. I, I think that's a good one. God, thank you. We're going to write. We're going to do so with that one. He wasn't just a beggar. See, the man wasn't just a beggar. He was someone who was looking for healing. He was someone who was looking for help. And he received it. The help. I go back here and say that he, he, the word Peter spoke was disappointing, but yet it was thrilling to the man. He wasn't just a beggar. And he took his right hand and lifted him up. Faith and action. See, Peter had faith. He believed. That church had faith. They believed that what they was doing was going to happen. They believed every word that Jesus had taught them and said. If you believe by faith, if you have a faith the size of a mustard seed, that's good enough. It can move mountains. So he took him by the right hand and lift him up, and immediately his feet and his ankle bone received strength. This with the faith of Peter to reach down and drive it, and the man's faith to believe that something was about to happen. This was a miracle. It was a miracle. The man was tripled from birth. He was born tripled. This is why I say today, it doesn't matter about your yesterday. This is about your right now. With so much technology in the world today, what was ailing you yesterday is always the possibility that today you can be healed from that, physically healed, because of technology. Because of what God is doing, what God is playing in people's head and mind and giving them the ability to come up with. We can, we can, but some of us don't want to be healed. Some of us rather walk in misery than walk in joy. We don't want to be healed. 
We don't want goodness. We want negativeness. We, 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 we try to destroy everything that comes good in our way. And for that cause, we stay weak. We stay helpless. We stay miserable. We stay crippled like this man. Let's go on. And he, leaping up, mm. stood mm. and walked mm. and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. See what I'm saying? I remember we go back we said that the man knew that was prayer time. He knew it was the temple. He knew something was going on. He had he, it, it, Faith calls him to just get on up and start walking. He said he jumped up. He leaped up. And when he leaped up, the first thing he did, he went right on into the temple and went to praising God. Mm. Went to praising God. He was looking for something more than just some silver and gold. He was looking for something more than just a hand knot. Because he was, I, I, don't, I know the man had to be, I, well, I believe. The man had been tired every day. Get Somebody got to carry him to this one spot every day. He had been tired of that. He had been tired of that. So he said when they told him to look, to get up and walk, he jumped up leaping. And went straight into the temple. He didn't go somewhere. He didn't go try and show his friends. He didn't go run around and forget all about what had happened. He went straight into the temple. It said that he went, he uh, 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 he leaped, and he leaping up, up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. That's what verse 8 says. The miracle of healing was immediate, not gradually. God healed this man immediately. Live like you're healed right now. Don't be talking about, I'm waiting. Well, I'm waiting. I know, I know, I know I'm going to get over this cold. I, I know I'm going to get over this sickness. I know this pain ain't going to stop eventually. I began to get it in your head that right now I'm healed. Right now I'm healed. Walk in your miracle. Walk in your newness. Walk in your healness. Your healing. Walk, 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 walk in it. The miracle of the healing was in me and not gradually. He didn't say, walk, get up and try to walk a little bit. He didn't say, take one step. Come on now. Get, let me help you out. Take one step. He didn't say it. He said, he said, in the name of Jesus. And the man leaped up like he had springs in his foot. Bouncing and bouncing. Mm. Notice how the spiritual God multiplied words of action and movement. He said that he leaped up. He didn't just stand up. He leaped up. Tremendous healing. We have to have tremendous faith in what God is able to do. We just can't have faith. I got faith in God. You know what you know? Faith without works is dead. That's scripture. Faith without works is dead. So if you're not living like you're healing, but you got faith that you're healing, but you're not living like you're healing, but you got faith that you're healed, but you're not living like you're healed, like you're healed your works is dead. It's dead. And then you wonder why you come back home and you're still hurting. You're not healed. Let's go on. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. The people saw him. And they knew this man had been, been tripled all this time. Now some folks saw him and said, what done happened to this fool? That's what some of them, how they responded to it. And then you had the other respond like, oh, he think he's something now. He can walk now. Oh, he think he's something now. Yeah, he is something. He's a miracle. My, your, your back is not hurting no more. That's a miracle. I can jump and play ball now. That's a miracle. Yeah. Oh, you think you're good now because you can play ball now. Yeah, that's a miracle. God healed me and I can do it now. But that's how people respond in the negative. But your healing is a positive, a, a positive event. It's a miraculous event that's taking place because of God love for you. And because of the simple mm -hmm. fact that as Isaiah 53 chapter say, that it's by Jesus Christ mm -hmm. that you are healed. Let's go on. And they knew that it was he mm. which sat for alms mm -hmm. at the beautiful gate of the temple. Mm -hmm. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. He said he'd been coming, no doubt. He, they knew it was him. They knew that the man had been coming there for years. Years. You know, you know we have to believe that no matter what. And no matter how much pain and suffering we go through, no matter what it is we go through, we have to believe that there's always a new beginning, that there's always a chance, there's always hope, there's always the ability to press forward toward the mark of the prize of the high calling. It's said that people run a race. There's one prize. There's one first prize. So you always have to run to attain that prize. 
always run to attain the first prize. And if you don't get that first prize, guess what? It don't mean that you haven't won anything. It mean, just mean that you haven't got that point yet. But you're still running. See, it's, it's when you stop. That's where the issue is. When you stop running. When you stop believing. When you stop having faith. That's where the problem comes in. See, if he had to stop going to that temple every day like he was going, he'd have never got this healing. But he didn't stop. He believed that he was here. Every day he went to that temple at the same hour, the ninth hour, every day. He knew prayer stuff was going on. He knew people was going on. Coming in and out. They said he was begging for arms. Yeah, he might have wanted something physical because he, he couldn't work. He crippled. He can't do nothing. Yeah, he wanted something physical. But he also understood that we see miracle, spiritual food. And he got it. Let's go on. And as the lame man, which was healed, held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's Greatly Wonder. And it said that as he began, uh, they saw he was filled with wonders and amazement at the gate, which is happy to see him. Okay, let's go back. And they knew that it was he which sat at Ains of the gate of Bruce for the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. His healing, his healing was undisputable. They were filled with wonders and amazement. What happened? We wondering what happened, but we're amazed that this crippled man is walking. We wonder how did it happen, but yet we're amazed that it did happen. And some even said, I believe, that we don't even understand what happened. He was never like that from Jump Street. Someone said he was just playing games. When Jesus healed the blind man, they asked him, how would you heal? Is this him? Is this the man that was blind? Some didn't believe he was blind. He said, hey, man, you go, go ask his mother and his father then. You don't want to believe. They said, was he blind? They said, he was blind from birth. They didn't want to believe it. How in the world would you walk around there for all the years, like this man sitting there begging like that all the years, and can't walk, can't, and you want to walk and people carry you. Don't you know that if you couldn't walk and people carry you every day, that they would know that you couldn't, you could walk? If you were faking? Years after years? They'll know if you fake. faking, but some people don't want to believe that you are here. And the, and the sad part about it is you don't want to believe that you're here. But the, I'm telling you this morning, live like you are here. As the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, he didn't want to let Peter and John out of his sight. You got to grab hold of Jesus and not let him out of your sight. <laughs> said, didn't want to let him out of sight. He said, I got something greater than food. I got something greater than a piece of money. So he grabbed hold on. He didn't want to let him out of sight. It was if his It, it, was, it, it, it was just as, as if everything about him had returned when they left, or so he thought. He thought that everything about him would, would disappear, or, or, he, or his legs and everything would return back to where he was. If, if, they, if he left them, they'd let him go. He, 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 did. he said, I got to hold on to him because what they're giving me, I, I can't lose. I got to hold on to him. This is how we got to feel about God. When we get a hold to God, when we get a hold to Jesus, we got to hold on to him. Like if we let him go, we'll just fall apart. That, that's how we got to hold on to it. I can't let you go, Jesus. I got to hold on for dear life because it is my life. My life is caught up in Jesus. If I let Jesus go, it's like I'm just gone. This is how this man felt. I hold on to Peter and John. He said he didn't want to let him go because he felt like if he let him go, the melee of what had happened to him would return back into him again. The physical deficiency that he had would return back into him. Being crippled would come back again. That's how he felt. That's how he felt. And all the people ran together to them in the porch that is called Solomon's. Some say it's called Solomon's Temple or Solomon's Porch. Greatly wondering, is do a crowd with the Holy Spirit intent? It said they come running, but the Holy Spirit want them to come running. The Holy Spirit want them to see. Come and see. 
what the Lord has done. Come and see what the Spirit of God has done. Come and see what the Holy Spirit has done. Jesus said, I go away, and I, but I won't leave you comfortless. He said, I go, I, I will send a comforter into you, and he will teach you and show you all things and put you in remembrance of me. Come and see what thus says the Lord. Come and see the healing power of Jesus. Come and see the lame man walk, the blind man see, the deaf man hearing, the dumb man speaking. Come and see and live like you live. God bless you this morning. We said that we wouldn't be with you alone this morning. We won't. We're just hoping that God gave you something from this particular message this morning that truly will enlighten you, will help you see that you are healed and that you must walk in your healing. You must live in your healing. We can't claim healing, but yet we're still speaking the same word negatively at the same time. If I'm healed, I'm healed. I must speak healing into my life. I must not speak negative things in my life. If I want to be healed, then I got to walk like I'm healed. I got to talk like I'm healed. I got to live as though I'm healed in the name of Jesus. Because the word did say that by his stripes we're healed. By the Holy Spirit we're healed. By the Holy Ghost we're healed. By God Almighty we're healed. By the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ we are healed. We don't have to live in sickness. We don't have to live in weakness. We don't have to live in poorness. We don't have to live in in a in a, a disgusted situation. We do not have to live like that. We can live as dope. And we, we don't have to live as dope. We can live because we are healed. We are free. We are rich. We are bountiful. Live like you're here and watch what God does for you. From the still free and not master, God bless you and you free us love you so much. But again, we hope that this, this has been a, a help to you in some form or fashion. Let us pray. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we again, we thank you this morning for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for this word that you have given us today, Father God. We just pray that it will touch someone's lives today, Father God. That will help them to see, Father God. Because we know that many people, Father God, walk around in pain in some form of natural. It's that natural pain. It's physical pain. It's not mental pain, Father God. It's spiritual pain. Mm -hmm. Seeking, trying to find a way in which they should go, but having no direction in which to go. But I, Father, I believe that this morning we have a word for them, that you have a word for them, that is to follow Jesus. Go to Jesus. Go to your Peter and to your John and ask them for the help that you need, the spiritual help for, and begin to leap to your feet, realizing that God is the healer. And hold on to it. Hold on to it in the precious name of Jesus. We're praying this morning, Father God, for churches and everybody where the doors are open, Father God, that people can come in and mm -hmm. be healed, Father God. Receive healing, not because of what the church is doing, but because of the faith that they have and the ability to be healed according to your word. By Jesus' stripes, we're healed. We thank you and we pray this morning for this divine word that you're giving to your people. We love you for it, Father God, and we are going to bless you because this is the day that you have made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. So we just thank you, God, for the steer for another ministry, what you're doing, how you're using us to get your word out there. We love you. We love you. We love you. We'll pray for those who are sick today, those who are weak today, those who are poor today, those who are struggling today. We are praying for them in the precious name of Jesus. Reach out and touch. Bring to them that which they need to know and understand that they are going to make it and that they are healed in the precious name of Jesus. We thank you and we love you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Until we're able to get together next time, we'll just say God bless you. We love you from the steel for your anointed ministry. And uh, one of our favorite words is this right here. In Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 12, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. To fear God and keep his commandment. But this is the whole duty of man. Our healing lies in the ability to fear God and keep his commandment. For that is the duty a reward. So we thank you and praise you. So when things are going bad, what do we do? We put a praise on it. When things it. are going good, what do we do? We put a praise on it. 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 God bless you. We love you until the next time. Amen. Amen and amen.